initiative from our end to you know to build up an ecosystem and to of course uh, highlight all the wonderful work most of the entrepreneurs are doing. We have been doing this in uh, Kolkata. We have been doing it in Mumbai. Day after tomorrow it's Jaipur, and after that we're going to be there in Pune. I would like to thank uh, Mahua. Where's Dr. Mahua yes. Dutta? The Mahua is there. She I told her about this idea, and she was very happy to go here. She came forward on her own. And she has really helped us a lot. Baba, thank you so much for everything. Thank you. And I would like to thank the sponsors and the presenters rather. E Yantram uh, with Ashish. Ashish Leia. Ashish, he runs, he runs a risk management for a company called uh, E Yantram, doing excellently well. We have got Kolkata signage. Uh, Amit Khetan, they are doing signages, doing excellently well. And uh, Mr. Koshik. He is here, he is representing JK Potamax. Uh, Manish is unfortunately not here, but Manish started as a company, a very small company, and is turning out to be one of the largest pain uh, manufacturers in the Eastern region. And I would like to also thank Suresh Agarwal, my brother, who is always so supportive, you know, and, uh, and I would thank this one of my perpetual friends, uh, Rithik Mukherjee, Rithik Da. He's always willing to moderate. It's a different issue that you know what I always tell Ritik that to come, and there's a reason behind it because he knows that I'm a khandur roshi And whenever I am at his office, he teaches me to kuchri and all the mysteries. And because of that, I always ensure that he's, a, he's there as a moderator. So, and uh, who's can I? Uh, everyone's here. We all are. We'll start the proceeding. I would like uh, summit. Samit is a one, we know Samit is a written talk voice, you know, and he's an excellent uh, content uh, creator, you know, in terms of what he writes. LinkedIn, I guess I always read his blogs, he is so awesome. And he's creating a niche for himself, featured in Forbes. He's always invited for, uh, you know, providing his input, insights in so many other issues which, which drives the separate ecosystem altogether. So, man, thank you for being here and thank you for supporting this cause. My pleasure. So, we'll start off with Sumit uh, moderate. He'll be doing the first moderation uh, part, and after that, Ritika will uh, uh, take over. So, Sumit, if I can ask you, permit you to come here. Samit will uh, start the presenting. Samit, all yours. Sorry, actually, we'll just take the uh, a small community of the presenters here who have been kind enough to support this whole initiative. Woodlands 
has many corporate other setups. Dr. Jitendra Shah, I would like to call you to the seat. Thank you so much, uh, ladies and gentlemen. It's uh, I'm finding myself a bit out of place here uh, with the so-called entrepreneurs of uh, modern society. Uh, but for me, it's a very refreshing change from the new day society of ophthalmologists and doctors all along, having the same discussions or back discussions to see so many fresh entrepreneurial faces in front, uh, all very challenging uh, people who are upfront about knowing what they are going to do and facing up with the challenges of life. Uh, my story is uh, very uh, simple really. I finished my fellowship in UK and then uh, it was a very easy uh, career prospect, mind you. Very easy career prospect to pick up a job like cherry picking and settling down in uh, United Kingdom. Started with a job, comfortable job, 9 to 5 with a good one hour break. Uh, it went on for a good uh, 13 years, I should say. Uh, then realized that what am I doing? Good, I've earned a few bucks. I've driven some second-hand good cars, Mercedes and whatever had childhood fascinations. Airport key, what next? It wasn't giving me the thrills at all. Although we had a select of good patients there. Mind you, not uh, uh, undermining UK or the prospects there at all. But I didn't get my kicks. Maybe I'm from a business background, I don't know. So, I dared myself, I gave up a comfortable uh, living, sold my house, small children, my wife is a pediatrician, my uh, friend, we were colleagues in uh, National Medical College in Calcutta, and we decided to, chalo, let's see what happens. Obviously, dad was there, there was a bit of a cushion, but uh, that was not that important. So, we gave up our jobs, sold our houses, uh, and came back to Calcutta. We had a flag to start with. Uh, I did not take up any attachments before that. So it was a very, very big gamble that I took. I feel very humbled and very grateful to God today when I see what I have done to myself in the last 13, 14 odd years that I have been in the city. Uh, why do I feel that? Because I took that challenge. I took that pledge and decided to come back to my source of origin, to my roots and take on this challenge of life. Totally new phase, although I have graduated, I did my post-graduation from Calcutta itself. But it was a totally new approach. I was away out of sight for 14 years. And then I am back again, trying to set myself up. Mind you, no jobs in hand, no paychecks, nothing. Three small children. I started, my wife started. We invested, we bought our own setup at New Alipur, which by God's grace is doing very well. Then I partnered with my very senior colleague of my olden years, Dr. Rup Chakravarti, and I contributed, although he's a major partner there. And we opened up this Amulya Jyoti I Foundation. I took up consultancy from Amri to Calcutta Port Trust to ILS to Woodlands, EDF, name it, and I was there. From those weekends where I was playing golf, doing nothing, here I was on a Friday and a Saturday doing clinics in the morning. But going home very happy, I can tell you. Don't get me wrong, going home very happy. I don't know. It was a connect with the people that probably made me feel that way, that made me feel energized that way. And then of course, money started coming in. I won't lie. And I'm very happily settled now. And I could enjoy these companies when I come. I'm very grateful that my childhood school buddy Sunil asked me to come down today. At first I didn't know what I would speak, but then here it is, I'm pouring my heart out to people whom I just know four or five of yours from other meetings, but here I'm pouring my heart out. So what I'm trying to say is, of course there are so many learned, so well equipped and handled ladies and gentlemen in front of me, I feel humbled actually to sit here and talk to you. But all I can say is, put your heart into it and go for it. You, you will achieve. I don't know how much you will achieve. You might say the sky is the limit. I don't know that. But yes, you will achieve. As long as you are happy with what you do, I am happy. I do my cataract surgeries. I have got a select bunch of very good patients, very happy clients. 
I love reading my Google reviews and I feel very satisfied that at the end of the day I have not really you know, done things that nasty and I get a good night's sleep. So that's my story really. And uh, what I would add on to this is that uh, I don't know much of business to be quite honest with you. You people are very much into business, much more informed. I'll probably learn from you when I leave this place. But one thing I realized is dedication and integrity. I'm sorry, some are very senior to me, but I am not, I'm just pouring my heart out, as I said. Dedication and integrity and believing in yourself, that is what will take you forward. You may not be the top 10 of anyone or top 5 somewhere, I don't know. But you will feel certainly be the top 10 or top 5 in your own heart. And that is what will matter to you at the end of the day. Thank you. It's a wonderful story, uh, Dr. Jitendra. We are all deeply touched by it. So, Dr. Jitendra, you have been in the UK for a considerable amount of uh, time in your life. And when you look at UK, when you look at a uh, place like India, what kind of difference do you see in, uh, you know, the kind of medical facility is over there and how could, you know, be people in India replicate certain aspects that are present there? Uh, I, I think, I think, uh, I hope I'm not, I hope, hope I'm not overstepping. I hope I'm overstepping. Hello? Yeah. Sorry, I hope I'm, hello. The mic doesn't like me anymore. Yeah. I changed the statement, I think. I hope I'm not, not going in well there. Uh, <laughs> I can't find any other reason, really. Uh, it, is that working? Yeah, this one is working. Sorry, I took yours. Uh, uh, don't get me wrong when I say I really mean it. India is the promised land, if you ask me. Uh, Forget all the negative publicity and everything. Look at our population. We are carrying half the world with us. So you can't uh, just look back and criticize. What we have today in India is probably something which the West aspires for. I know so many people, so many people, they come for their knee replacements, the hip replacements, for the cataracts, for their dental implants. You know why? Because at the drop of the hat, they can get a very select group of surgeons who does immaculate surgery and they fly back home rather than waiting there for a, a, a UK when I was first starting my cataract surgeries that is the 1996-97 people used to wait for two years so I listed them for cataract and then I knew I would probably go to the next job because I wouldn't see that patient anymore two years is a long interval here you get the best of friends to operate on you probably within a two or three day gap so what I'm trying to say is there is a there is an immense scope in India. You got to know where to go for it and how to go for it. It is your innovation that at the end of the day will carry you forward. And of course the most important thing is believing in yourself and having that integrity. This was a wonderful and lovely advice for for everyone who is aspiring to, you know, go for their treatment abroad, they can look at their options in India. And uh, so, Dr. Jitendra, coming back to the present, what advice do you have for young entrepreneurs who are going to, wanting to get into the medical or pharmaceutical business or, say, uh, a setup like yours? Most important thing, do your homework very well. Don't take the plunge until you feel you are absolutely uh, well equipped with the information and the knowledge that you, leave, that you need to help you carry it forward. Do your homework, that's the bottom line really. And once you have it, make sure you have got all the right connects. Uh, join as many different forums as you think you can. Uh, it is always good to share and learn. Uh, I am going to go home today learning a lot. I've already learned a lot from Dr. Somojit Basu who was discussing a lot about oxygen and how it is, how they are setting it up and I had absolutely no idea. So I will go home with a lot of information today. So that's the answer really. Thank you Dr. Dijan. 
and lay till down to that end of day session. Lighting heart to heart section with Dr. Jitendra, our next speaker has been an inspiration for the youth. Our next speaker is one of the emerging young minds who empowers the youth population of Bengal and a lot of other people from India. I'm talking about Meghdu Dry Chaudhary, who is the executive director and chief innovation officer of Techno India. Meghdu has been a serial entrepreneur. He started his first business at the age of 19. He has a master's in management uh, with a specialization in international business from Paris, Stanford University, and Tel Aviv University. He's currently the executive director and chief innovation officer of Techno India. He also runs co working spaces, startup incubator called Techno Entrepreneurs Sarov Adventures in Kolkata. He has also recently founded Mimbal Business Council to promote entrepreneurship in Kolkata. Welcome. If you would like to kindly share your journey with us. Sure. I think I'm going to not use the mic because it didn't go very well the last time. Am I audible? Yeah, yeah. Yes. I think I just prefer doing it this way. Thankfully, God gave the Asbaw serials. They're also talking about Namita Thapar and, uh, and Aman Gupta. And, you know, they're talking about startups are finally a dinner table conversation. So we have it better than what our past generations had, uh, at least. At least the at least the can of worms is open now. At least it's not taboo to talk about entrepreneurship anymore. And I'll give you a very short, small example on that. I think the biggest news, if you look at any of the, I mean, I'm from education, so obviously for me this is the biggest news. I don't know if it's the biggest news for you. But the but Stanford University, my alma mater, they came up with their first school of sustainability uh, yesterday uh, with an endowment of $1.1 billion. And uh, just to let you know, at Techno India, we built our sustainability department five years ago. So that's, that's what, and you know, we say, you know, what Bengal, we always said this, what Bengal thinks today, India thinks tomorrow. And what Bengal thinks today, India, India, the world is thinking today, Bengal thought about five years ago. And I'm not even saying that from a point of, you know, looking down upon anyone. I, I have so much of the, my entrepreneurial journey has been inspired by my time spent in Palo Alto in the valley with all of these incredible entrepreneurs. But a lot of that, and interestingly enough, the, the dean, the guy who's running the uh, School of Sustainability at, uh, at Stanford is a Bengali, Orun Mukherjee. Think about that, all of that human capital somehow ties up to Bengal in some bizarre way. And yet, Bengal is, uh, he's still talking about how can we make Bengal the Silicon Valley. I don't think we should, that's the angle we should be looking at, but hopefully, the intergenerational mindset shift is going to happen if three things happen. That's my take, and I think that I won't take any more of the uh, of our time. The first thing that's going to happen, and it's going to be very important, is when we see the first unicorn coming out of Bengal. We still haven't seen that. Unless that happens, unless parents see that kids have the potential of making so much money that the next ten generations can survive on just that, they will not be convinced enough to let them opt for the entrepreneurship journey right out of college. Two is that a lot of these parents themselves also need to sort of uh, take the path less traveled because uh, you know we Bengalis get very comfortable and if you've been and when I say Bengali here I also mean everyone who's in Bengal which is comfortable Bengal actually really feeds your comfort I think that's one of our has been one of the reasons why Bengal is so unique but it's also one of the reasons why we've sort of lost the track at some point of time uh, at some point uh, because we lost that drive. And the third thing I think uh, which would really make Bengal, which has the potential of making Bengal great again, is the building up of what we call a startup common. And a startup common is formed by seven um, very essential things that are uh, that are responsible for converting unfunded startups into funded startups. And it includes everything from pillar companies. Uh, and when we mean pillar companies, it's the equivalence of a Google, Facebook, Microsoft, and I don't mean back offices. We, that is not going to be important. Uh, that important or as important as like the brain center. So if it's a flip card, it needs to be a, even if it's a hundred people uh, office, uh, instead of a 10,000 or 10 lakh square foot go down, I think it serves more to the purpose of bringing business back into Bengal because those hundred people then 
uh, you know, then, then they break out of Flipkart and then they open their own companies and then they bring funding to the younger startups. So when I talk about pillar companies, that's one of the reasons we don't have pillar companies in Bengal. It's a very big problem. We don't have big funded companies working out of Bengal. Uh, and that is one of the core areas that hold the startup common together. Of course, the other things that you might already know, everything from your investment capital, your human capital, your universities, Universities also need to be way more aggressive. I, we run four universities, about 20 colleges, 10 business schools, and I know that entrepreneurship is not very well looked at in the universities. I have the biggest fights with all of our professors because they are terrible mentors. And if any of my professors are in the audience, I'm sorry, but I've said this before and I'll say it. Keep saying it until you guys get better as mentors. And there's a reason for that. I think we're also at fault. Universities are not conducive to innovation, particularly for the reason because Faculty members and professors do not have any equity in the businesses they build. That's very different from Stanford or in the Bay Area because all of the faculty members have a stake. If you, if it's your idea on which a startup is built, you have money to make out of that. You have, uh, you know, you you have a potential of a revenue model in your life, and that, and you can still continue treat, uh, teaching. Just because you made a couple of million on startups does not mean. You stop, it means you teach even more, you get into the innovation world and you invest more in companies. So everything from your universities to your pillar companies to your human capital, intellectual capital, presence of an entrepreneurship ecosystem in the form of incubators, accelerators, all of these things is basically what creates the funnel from an unfunded to a funded startup. And this does not happen overnight normally in any, even if you look at a at one of the faster growing startup ecosystems like a Tel Aviv or an Estonia or like Tallinn in Estonia, um, it takes about 20 years. Uh, so I think we're just about hitting the six, seven year mark in Bengal. Uh, it's, it's going to be a long and uphill path in the next, uh, hopefully, I, I hope my predictions come true and you know, otherwise I'm accountable to all of you. Uh, I hope in the next five years we're going to see our first unicorn coming out of Bengal. Uh, 7,000 crores is not a lot of money uh, if you look at it, but by Bengal standards it is a lot of money. We'll see what happens. If all of these things fall into the right places and hopefully a lot of young people like you, like a lot of you entrepreneurs in the room come together, I think we can really kill it. Bengal has a lot of potential. Wish everyone the best of luck. Looking forward to learning from all of you today. Thank you.